happening, Reef Builders? Jake Adams here, back in the studio spot, and I am trying something new for you guys on this particular video. Um, over the years, I've kind of experimented with the format of how I share uh, the live experience with you. Back in the day, all we did was some small write-ups, and then we had pictures, and then we had video clips on Instagram and things like that, but for this particular video, what I've done is I've just walked through Reef Palooza Orlando this past weekend and uh, took clips of the newest products and kind of the standout things that really grabbed my attention the most. And um, yeah, figure instead of narrating them there, it might be interesting to uh, tell you more about them uh, once I'm here back at the studio so I'm less rushed and I can probably give you a little bit more detail. But um, anyway, this just, uh, always trying to uh, experiment with the format here. Also, in this particular video, I'm really just gonna be focusing on um, the dry goods, the dry goods, the products, um, and all that good stuff. I took a lot of clips of the corals, and I'll put that together in a similar way, and we'll see how this video is received um, to determine whether I put out the actual Reef Blues of Corals video, because I have a lot of material. I've got a display tank at Worldwide Corals. I've uh, shot an update to the farm tour at Worldwide Corals, and I have five or six different video topics from the natural reefs. We're not hurting for content here at the studio. Just have to stay focused and uh, put it out for you guys. So this should be kind of like a, an intermediate step to uh, putting together a really, really nice uh, live stream. So uh, yeah, let's take a look and uh, see what the first item is. So right when you walked in at Reef Palooza, uh, one of the biggest booths that I saw really caught my eye was GHL. GHL is a German company that sometimes um, kind of really coasts with their product line, but for the last two or three years, they've been really aggressive in putting out new products. So this is a thermoelectric chiller, the PTC2. This comes in several different sizes, and I think I just need to pull it up real quick to see. All right, so this is a uh, Profilux Temperature Controller 2. It's coming next year from GHL. Um, it's thermoelectric, so it should be a lot more efficient than uh, compressor-based uh, chillers that we're mostly used to. This is gonna be actually pretty good for the smaller tanks, for the medium-sized tanks, and also for uh, just kind of maintaining a few degrees, shaving a few degrees off if your tank gets hot, um, and I guess kind of giving you a little bit of an edge. So uh, let's see, what are these rated for? Uh, up to up to 480 watts um, of cooling capacity. And so that's about uh, um, almost 10 degrees Fahrenheit in a 50 gallon tank. So like I said, that'll shave off a few degrees off a regular tank. So let's see what else do we have next. This is pretty cool. Um, it's a new style flow sensor. And at first, I, I, when I first saw it, I assumed that it had some kind of an impeller inside. But um, I think this is a, uh, um, hypersonic or ultrasonic uh, water measuring device. So it uh, sends an electrical signal through that central core. Um, but what's cool is that there's no moving parts to that particular flow sensor. And um, it also should be more accurate over time uh, as far as uh, like, there won't be any obstructions uh, slowing down the impeller inside that would be actually measuring the water flow speed. Uh, so you won't be able to use that standalone. You'll need a uh, Proflux controller, but probably one of the bigger announcements from GHL is the Mitritz uh, LX7204. 7204 is a new four cluster version of the Mitritz LED light. And um, what's neat for this one is it has 66% of the power of the original light, uh, the big boy with six clusters, um, but it does away with the built-in on-screen controller. And instead, it uh, plugs, it uh, connects directly through the GHL Connect app uh, via Bluetooth, and you can use that to uh, uh, program it, control it, and uh, get it set up on your local Wi-Fi network. All right, moving right along. Uh, Elos's fish food uh, was one of the first premium fish food, and what we mean by that is um, this was one of the first foods that really had that soft touch because it was uh, extruded and processed at really low temperatures. So it's been a little while since uh, Elos has really promoted their food line. Um, so I think the biggest change here is we have some new packaging, some new sizes, but most importantly, um, they should be the same price, but they go from 40 grams to 65 grams, if I'm not mistaken. 
So like almost 30% more material um, for their coral food, their soft pellet food. Um, and as you can see, it's like, you know, Lotus were with all the good stuff and no nasties. So yeah, it's kind of nice to see uh, Elos getting back on track with their fish food. All right, next was the um, CJ Extreme. And it's, it's always hard for me because I encounter a lot of these products at Interzoo in Germany, uh, oftentimes six months to two years before they're ever available. So I've been watching this pump for a long time, but I actually haven't got my hands on it yet. Um, but this is a uh, wirelessly controllable um, uh, propeller style internal water pump from CJ. CJ is one of the best motor makers in the aquarium hobby. Um, and I think you can pair up those two pumps. I'm not sure if you can do more. Um, and together, those two are gonna be super efficient, small, quiet, and powerful. So, um, Sicha Xtreme, it's nice to see it out in the wild. And um, I actually think I might have a couple on the way here to the studio soon. So uh, on a slightly different note, I knew it was only a matter of time before the whole CBD craze hit the aquarium hobby. Um, this is a product uh, from a company called Healthy Fish. I think it was an offshoot of Underwater World, a wholesaler out of Los Angeles. And uh, say it's designed for fresh water, salt water, it's got garlic. It's kind of a snake oil, it's kind of a fish tonic. Um, doesn't have a very specific purpose or specific claims, I guess. It's very general. It's like, oh, it'll make things better. But anyway, it's kind of fun, you know, being from Colorado, surrounded by uh, canaceutical culture um, to see CBD uh, product for the aquarium market. So now let's move on to uh, kind of a more real product that we expect to see on people's tanks in the future. This is the DX18 Hybrid T5HO dimmable light fixture. Uh, from Aquatic Life. Uh, so last year, maybe at the end of 2017, they put out this neat hybrid fixture concept um, that was specifically designed to uh, bring four T5s and have a nice opening in the middle for uh, any number of popular LED light fixtures, including the Kessel, AI, uh, Ecotech Marine, and the HM Electronics, because it's a really small, nice little cluster. Uh, so Aquatic Life has doubled down on this idea with the uh, hybrid light fixtures. So they've actually finished um, this thing a little bit more on the outside, so it's a little bit more presentable. And um, it's also dimmable. However, for the dimmable functions, you're going to have to bring your own uh, zero to 10 volt controller. So any number of aquarium controllers, um, like a Proflux or Aquatronica, will do that pretty fine. Uh, so next, kind of along the lines of the Happy Fish CBD oils, a new product, um, this is also from an LA wholesaler. It's called Pr Prime Coral. And one is called Stop RTN, and the other one is Prevent RTN. Um, so these are, uh, I think they, you know, when you see something that says all natural, floral, herbal extract, it doesn't exactly instill confidence. Um, I gave it a quick whiff and it kind of smelled like uh, Melaleuca, which is kind of interesting because uh, Australians have been using uh, Melafix, an aquarium product, to dip their aquarium corals for a long time. Um, but according to Prime Coral, um, the extracts of this particular product, it's all proprietary of course, um, in one concentration is said to stop RTN, uh, if you can catch it early, um, or prevent RTN. So they have, uh, uh, I guess, an uphill battle to you know, improve and show the aquarium hobby the effectiveness of their product. Um, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and uh, you know, be cautiously optimistic on the sidelines for now. So moving right along, this is kind of cool and it's actually about time that we got to see a, uh, not just an aquarium box, but a reef box. So Mystery Reef Box is a new project by fellow YouTuber, uh, Mad Hatter's Reef. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Mad Hatter's Reef, and it's got a variety of samples of food, test kits, carbon stickers, glue, frag disc plugs. Um, I think at any given uh, month, you're going to you know, receive a variety of these uh, objects. And there's also a nano uh, mystery reef box for the smaller sizes. Um, now, I know a lot of the YouTubers are already showing like the entire floor space of Repluza. I actually showed up there two hours late. I, don't, I can't handle being there right when the doors open. I'm gonna be there like right before they open, but I'll give it like two hours to kind of cool off because it's just so packed. Um, this is actually the show floor around 12, 30, one o'clock. I still could like, I could walk around, but it was, you know, a slow pace and, and very slowly and carefully. So. 
All right, so something new from somebody old. This is a brand new protein skimmer design uh, from High Door. Uh, last couple of years, High Door has been really um, make some great uh, progress putting together their controllable. Uh, pump line first with the Akamai propeller pumps and now with the controllable AC motors in their Seltz D return pumps and I have one over on the Red Sea tank. They've already uh, working on a pipeless protein skimmer design that uses a needle wheel version of the Seltz D and a whole new body. So you'll notice it has this this wide white collar um, which has that's where the neck goes onto the body. It has an integrated air silencer, but it's also got this funky little lever, and this lever um, basically opens up uh, the doors, basically, or the outlet um, at the base of the protein skimmer. Um, but it's pretty, pretty cool because the pump is controllable, the body is kind of interesting, and uh, the controller knob goes straight through the cone skimmer body. So it looks cool in a, in a handful of different ways. All right, so this is. Uh, I, you know, I, I, time out, time out, time out. I, I want to be <laughs> open-minded about everything I come across. And I'm a big believer in activated carbon, but there was this tank full of um, charcoal, basically. It's basically, uh, um, they burned off everything but the carbon of some nice woods. Um, this company, Aquachar, was maybe overselling the activated carbon, uh, the, p the powers and the abilities of activated carbon um, when they're super high grade, large, you know, chunk uh, activated carbon. Again, I'm a huge activated carbon user, but they were wanted $70 for a bag of charcoal about this big. And I understand that they're using high quality wood and a special, you know, gasification chamber to make this high quality wood. But, you know, instead of encouraging people to change out the carbon, you know, every two weeks to four weeks, a small amount is something we all really do. You know, they were kind of claiming more like, oh, put our carbon in and change it out every three, four, five, six months. Um, and the guy at the, at, at the booth was talking something about it's like a septic tank and just continually absorbs stuff. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'm picking up what they're putting down. I appreciate the uh, evangelizing of uh, the, the abilities of activated carbon, but I think they might be taking them a little bit further. Um, all right, what's next? So uh, Mindstream, Step Ahead Innovations has been going at this project for like four or five years, it seems like forever. But if you've been coming to Reeves Talk in Denver, you know that they've come every single year to give us updates. This is a real product. This is not a shoestring budget. This is a real device. And I think right about now, it's in the beta testing phases. And one of the things that they put together recently is um, a, a better engineered cover to kind of keep the disc on so that uh, curious fish and strong water flow uh, can't knock off that sensitive sensitivity disc. Um, so yeah, the Mindstream is still in the works. It's still coming. It's just a matter of time. It's going to be amazing. So uh, stay tuned for that. So like I was saying about Germany and Interzoo, I get to see products uh, way in advance of their release. So it's here we are. It's only been one year, almost one year, and finally got to see the reef-led uh, LED light from uh, Red Sea in the flesh. I have no doubt that this thing is going to have an amazing spectrum, really get great controls. Um, I have some reservations about the boxiness of the light fixture itself. Um, and the other thing that kind of uh, struck me is um, just discovered that there's a 50 watt version and a 90 watt version. That's important because they both have, I guess, 8 watts or 10 watts of 8,000 Kelvin white, but the 50 watt version has 40 watts of blue and the 90 watt version has 80 watts of blue. So vis a -vis, when those two are at full intensity, you get a different balance of spectrum. Um, I have a feeling that they're gonna have some, some salesman-y way or some technical way of explaining to me how that's not the same ratio. Uh, that is, it is the same ratio because, uh, between the two lights, but we'll have to see uh, when I get an official answer from them. But either way, the Reflet 50, Reflet 90 are going to be very aggressively priced. Um, Red Sea is working very hard to kind of uh, button up their ecosystem because they've got the tanks, they've got the additives, the salts, uh, they got the protein skimmer out recently. And uh, yeah, we're working on putting together a Red Sea native tank over there. So uh, stay tuned, we'll be testing out all of this stuff. 
So here's something a little bit different. You know, I came across, uh, I come across a lot of reef aquarium tattoos, but I saw this one and it was um, a little cartoony, a little playful, but it was all like real animals. So we have a stone agobiops, we have a nice uh, giant clam, some, po some uh, lord polyps, some zoane polyps, uh, a clearly a wrasse, maybe like a bubble coral, giant clam. Um, I think there was a candy garden eel. And that's this guy's, um, his own actual piebald tang, his, uh, his koi tang. Um, we've got some obligatory sponges. So yeah, that was just kind of a really cool, neat thing to do. It's really neat to see the reef aquarium culture bubbling up to the point where people are inking up an entire sleeve of just like, you know, uh, reef aquarium animals, not just reef, lights, reef life like whales and dolphins and sea turtles and sharks. All right, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a funny topic because this one right here is not something I expected to see. This is a, what I call the murdered out of black rock from a real reef. This is at the saltwateraquarium.com booth and it had a slightly purplish tint because it appeared that um, the black coating was put over a purple coating. So it wasn't like this jet, jet, jet black, but still really, really cool. And if you've ever seen those photos of corals on a black background or black sand, wow, man, those colors really, really pop. And so with that in mind, I cannot wait to get my hands on some of this black real reef rock. Um, I also love <laughs> the idea that the, we're starting to get some murdered out aquarium products. Um, in the reef aquarium scene. So yeah, that's a pretty interesting product. I believe saltwateraquarium.com is gonna have a uh, exclusive on it, at least for a little while until it blows up. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, speaking of semi-ridiculous things, this small little pump, I believe is in a biz A400 and the pump behind it, it looks like a dummy. It looks like a mock-up. That is the Abyss A1200. So I think it's rated for like 1200 watts and it does some ridiculous like 12,000 or 16,000 gallons per hour. Um, the thing just looked comical sitting there uh, on the, uh, the stool. And um, what's interesting about it, I, it's gonna have uh, three different volutes and maybe impellers. And the combinations is gonna let you basically um, have three different options with the same pump from uh, very high volume with low pressure to lower volume, but extremely high pressure, and then kind of a middle of the road version. Okay, so speaking of comically large uh, aquarium devices, um, Abyss also has a propeller style water pump. Um, it's a reasonable size for public aquariums and apparently that wasn't big enough. So this thing uses essentially the same motor and power supply um, as the A1200, uh, but with different windings, windings. So it's basically a torpedo minus the actual ballistic part. Um, this is exclusively, exclusively for use in large public aquariums probably to act as like a treadmill for pinnipeds, uh, dolphins, and small whales. So that is not for home aquariums. It'd be really cool if Abyss uh, ever made a small aquarium version of this propeller pump, but we'll have to see. All right, so what else did we see? So at the, also at the Coral View booth, uh, Zepta is a new company out of Spain, and they have this machine called the Auto Balance. Um, and they also recently came out, it hasn't even, these two things have not come out, but they're gonna work together, is the uh, uh, SEPTA AB Expander, AKA the ABEX. And the expander for the Auto Balance has uh, ion specific probes, including magnesium, nitrate, calcium, uh, potassium, and I'm missing one. But all together, I believe, the Auto Balance plus the uh, ABEX, I think it's like 850 bucks. So you'll have direct measurement of alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, nitrate. Um, it's a very interesting approach and we'll have to see how that plays out uh, in the aquarium hobby. So this is the Coral View Hydros wave engine. Um, it's designed to tap into um, and kind of replace a controller for any number of pumps. One of the big upsides is if you have uh, four devices, um, you can use a single power supply going through this wave engine to power four different pumps. But uh, man, I'm not really, you know, I like indicator LEDs. I'm not really feeling that giant uh, blinkety blink uh, thing they have going on. I'm sure that's uh, uh, user settable in the app. Um, but case in point, if you have a ton of water pumps, especially 
like a medium to large pump or even a commercial operation, that's where this would really make sense because you can use gyre pumps, uh, reef pulse, various protein skimmer pumps. Um, I think there's a version also, or there's a RF module to connect into Vortec pumps and Vectra pumps. Um, so this is a, you know one pump controller to rule them on, and as you can see, you know uh, produce boiling water uh, while you're at it. Whew, not bad, all right. We got a few. Uh, we got a few more things to show you. Hope you guys are enjoying this segment. Let's see. So the other thing that really caught my attention. This was probably like one of the. This would have been the product of the show if they had it running. But they didn't have it running. They had it just sitting there on the table. This is the Mac Flow One from an aquarium, uh, Australian aquarium company. Uh, maybe one of the first Australian aquarium products to really be innovated from land down under. It's a dual outlet water pump um, that is a controllable uh, pump. It has a built-in uh, radio, but basically you control um, the speed of the pump and um, there's a wave maker slash flow alternator on the top of the unit and you can set uh, both uh, the output of the, the pump and the frequency with which the alternator uh, alternates. So those are both powered. Um, I wanna say it was like 700 to 1200 gallons per hour. It's gonna be a high pressure style pump to, have, to be able to push through that uh, flow alternator. Um, and uh, I think it's gonna come in an 80 watt and 120 watt, if my memory serves correctly. But anyway, there's a lot more I wanna know about the Mac Flow One pump. It looks really, really promising, um, but we're just gonna have to wait to hear back from them on availability. And I think pricing is gonna be pretty reasonable. All right, so here is the Aeroqua Duo from MaxSpect, the first protein skimmer from MaxSpect. It's got a really cool design, an integrated air silencer in the base of the protein skimmer. It's just like a factory of foam, and it uses the uh, uh, MaxSpect Turbine Duo, the dual volume water pump, um, to basically chop in air with a needle wheel using one motor but two volutes. And there is a way that you can set this up where only one of the volutes has a needle wheel for chopping in air, and the other one has regular impeller for bringing in water um, if you want kind of a recirculating style design. So, um, yeah, we need a, this is a kind of an updated version from the prototype we saw at Reef Palooza in California um, later last year. But it's nice to see uh, Max Beck is still working on it because uh, it's cool shape and it's uh, cool design and constrained technology. So, uh, looking forward to hearing more from Max Beck's uh, Air Aqua Duo Protein Skimmer. This was an interesting surprise. I did not expect a cylinder tank to catch my attention. I hate the name, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful aquarium, the Aqua Silo. Um, I guess on its own silo is not such a bad name, but just reminds me of like a, a grain silo or something. So this is gonna be available in three sizes. We've got 32 gallon, 53 gallon, and 103 gallon. I think this 53 gallon what we're looking at um, has built in kind of standard lighting, plumbing, sump, maybe even a return pump and a stand for like $1,300. So that's actually kind of like ridiculously cheap for a cylinder aquarium. And it's the pricing of the cylinder aquariums that has made them uh, prohibitively expensive in the past. But uh, something about the styling and especially the white color of the aqua silo uh, made me look around the studio to see where I might have a, a good spot for it. So, Let's see if we can do a little hustling and get one of these in the studio, mostly for looks. But more than for looks is this little device that they put together um, from Proclear Aquatic Systems. Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, Proclear Aquatic Systems is the countertop fragger. And what I like about this is you can, you know, anytime you make frags, you, you know, dip them and you rinse them. And then normally we put them on a rack or put them kind of right back in the aquarium. But here you can do two things, or you can do more than two things. Um, in addition to displaying some higher end frags with that, you know, showy black background that I was telling you about um, for sale, I like the idea of having it be a, um, both a kind of a dedicated coral dipping little area, but also an observation spot. So I'm thinking about getting one of those so I can very carefully um, both inspect, cleanse, dip, and observe um, every single coral frag that's gonna go through the flagship reef tank that I posted a video about uh, here recently. 
So this is the uh, Mega Matrix system from Planet Aquariums. Um, so we've seen these kind of customizable uh, uh, menus, I guess, and websites for uh, quickly selecting a custom aquarium size, details, uh, finishes. Um, but uh, Planet Aquariums, who built my 400 gallon future to be super awesome hot rod tank, um, they put together basically this um, customizable web page that's going to be uh, available at aquarium stores but also online for you to see like what they make and the common sizes so you're not asking for something that's 77 and 3 8 inches because that's just not practical so this is going to be pretty cool if you're in the market for uh, um, any kind of custom aquarium or extra large aquarium you can very quickly get a feel for how much it's going to cost you can customize the stand as well and um, i think there's also you can get a quick uh, for how much it'll cost to ship to your home or to your local store. All right, well, last but not least, I wanted to show off, there's uh, definitely a movement for a lot more artwork in the reef aquarium world. Um, I'm not sure, what is this company called? This company's called Coral Creations, and these are actual coral skeletons that have been painted with fluorescent paint um, and you know some some coral some clam shells and they've been framed and light lit lighted um, very flatteringly and I just love it man I just all the all this playful artwork that's happening here in the reef aquarium hobby and uh, yeah so that's going to wrap it up here for the the coverage of the reef palooza um, product and artwork uh, segment of this really nice show and I just want to show off this cute little crocheted um, little zoanthid, standalone zoanthid um, that a fan gave me while I was walking around uh, Reef Palooza this past weekend. So, all right, well I'm just kind of winging it on this new format here for sharing the products with you guys. Uh, give me some feedback on what you liked, what you don't like, uh, what you want to see more of. Um, like I said, this is a stepping stone into, uh, you know, one day kind of putting together maybe like a weekly live reef aquarium show. So your, feed, your constructive feedback and criticism is appreciated. Um, in the meantime, I just want to say as a fellow reef aquarium event organizer, uh, I've been to a lot of reef bluesas, been a lot of magnets, put on a lot of reef stocks and uh, I don't know what it is that there was a perfect storm a perfect combination of people venue uh, timing vendors and exhibitors at Reef Palooza Orlando this past weekend that was really nice it was just really enjoyable it's a lot of great corals it was just such a well buttoned up event I can't think of really anything I would change um, it's always nice to see a little bit more ladies out at the reef show, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's a topic for another video. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in. I just want to get this video out for you guys so you kind of see some of the things that really grabbed my attention at Reef Palooza Orlando this past weekend. And uh, keep it locked because I have a lot of videos to uh, work on and edit for you guys. So, uh, I'll be back at you soon with another exciting reef aquarium video.